In November 1928, the stock market surged by 18% in just four months, just a year before the Dow Jones made its notorious 1929 peak. We also witnessed an 18% rally within a four-month time period in July of 1987. The stock market was surging quickly to new all-time highs just a few months before the big Black Monday crash, leading the stock market 40% lower than it was just a few months ago. And in April of 1999, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average also rallied 18% to new all-time highs just before the stock market began a vicious bear market lasting three years. Now today, over the last four months, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has also returned a staggering 18%. We can see that by looking at this blue indicator that shows us how much the stock market has moved up or down over the last four months. And you can see more recently, we've hit an 18% return just over the last four months on the Dow Jones, returns that many believe are a sign of a speculative market that's just waiting to reverse. But when we look at this in a little bit more detail, we see that the market also had such a strong performance in May of 2020, and that was just the very beginning of a much larger move higher in the stock market. In fact, we saw the same thing in 2019, in 2017, in 2012, and in 2009, all of these were great moments to actually be buying into the stock market strength that we were seeing at the time of these episodes, as they were all followed by much more upside in the following months. In fact, many significant bear market bottoms throughout history have been marked by these types of exceptional four-month rallies, which actually leads many to believe that the stock market strength we're seeing today should lead to more upside in the coming months and years. Of course, the big difference today being that the stock market is at all-time highs, meaning the stock market has never been higher than current levels. That was not the case in any of these episodes that you see here. Today, not only is the stock market making an 18% rally, but it's also making fresh new highs. And it turns out that that's quite a rare thing to see. We've only seen it a handful of times in history. These were the only three moments in history where we've seen an 18% rally with the stock market at all-time highs. It happened two times over the course of two years between 1986 and 1987, and it was also seen two times over the course of two years between 1927 and 1929. Yes, at the first glance, it seems that this type of market strength doesn't end well as all of these periods of extreme strength were followed by large market corrections. But in all three cases, between the first reading and the actual top of the market, it was around two full years and two years where the stock market actually continued to be very strong. Between the first signal in 1986 and the top of the market in August of 1987, the Dow Jones rallied 40% over the course of two years. Between the first signal in 1997 and the top of the market in 1999, the stock market experienced an additional 30% gain over the course of two years. These market environments that we witnessed during these episodes were extremely difficult for rational investors to really navigate. What you had in front of you was a market that was expensive, that was extremely strong, but that market strength was actually sustained for multiple months if not years. In 2024, we also have a market that is fundamentally expensive. We have market strength that seems unsustainable. But the key difference is that we haven't seen extraordinary returns for a very long time, like in 1999, in 1987, and 1929. The blue line that you see here shows you the return of the stock market over the last five years. Now, over the course of the last five years, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has returned around 49%. That's a decent return and more or less in line with the average return that you can expect from the stock market over most five-year periods. But it is much lower than the returns that we experienced in the five years leading up to 1999 and in the five years leading up to 1987. We can also say the same thing about the five-year returns leading up to 1929. In all three of these cases, the stock market rose by a 195% in the five years leading up to these tops. So this actually makes the case that the stock market still has more runway today before we get into a similar kind of euphoria. It could very well continue like it did in the late 1990s, where the stock market continued to strengthen until the US encountered a recession that began in 2001. The late 1990s was a period of economic prosperity. This blue line shows you the job market, and you can see throughout this rally that we witnessed in the late 1990s, this, the job market was very strong. It wasn't until the job market began to weaken that you saw this incredible strength 
turn into lots of weakness. Today, we actually see something similar where the job market has stayed very strong, making investors confident that we're not about to enter a recession like in 2008 and 2001, where initial claims were actually rising, leading into these downturns. So as long as that trend continues, you could actually continue to see the stock market show bouts of strength like it has over the past few months. But there are some signs that could make investors want to be cautious about the job market today. The leading indicator index made by the conference board has just made its 20th consecutive month in decline. We've never seen this index decline for more than eight months straight without a recession occurring. This is an index that is basically a big basket of different leading indicators of the economy. There's the yield curve that we know has an incredible track record of predicting recessions. Things like housing building permits, manufacturing surveys, consumer goods orders. Now, although individually each indicator cannot be relied on 100% to anticipate recessions, when taking the aggregate result of all of these different data sets, we come up with this line right here. And over the last 60 years, it has declined in anticipation of every single recession. And today, of course, we're seeing one of the most severe declines in this index that we've witnessed throughout history, making it pretty likely, in our opinion, that we're going to be encountering a recession over the next year. While we've seen the leading indicators come down, we've seen coincidence incident economic indicators continue to move higher. This blue line is known as coincident economic indicators, and they reflect how the economy is doing today. And right now, it's moving undeniably higher. And we've actually seen that happen quite a few times in history, where we see coincident indicators continue to move higher despite leading indicators moving down. Eventually, all of these divergences between leading and coincident economic indicators were resolved with coincident economic indicators catching down, which for now is still what we believe is going to happen this month, the next, or maybe later in 2024. That's up for debate. One of the trades that we're currently looking at to play in 2024 is actually small caps stocks. These are much smaller companies to the ones you'll find on the S&P 500 index, but they happen to be a lot cheaper. These stocks are at a P.E. ratio of around 14, while large cap stocks stand at a P.E. ratio above 20. We've never seen such a massive dislocation in the value of these stocks. We think there's a good chance that we see small cap stocks catch up to the rest of the market. We sent out an alert notification that we were adding small caps as a long entry earlier last week. We'll be following this trade very closely on our website.